loading. Okay, so we are live now on uh, Facebook and we are coming from our group, the uh, Gift of Time Management Lab. And I am here with Dr. David Drake from the University of Iowa. And uh, David is also a member of our group, and, <clears throat> excuse me, a very active member of our group. And he has also recently attended the eight week seminar that uh, we had uh, that ended about a month ago. So I'm gonna give David an opportunity to say a little bit more about himself and then ask him a few questions. Um, and then we will go on from there. So David, thank you so much for taking the time out of your really busy schedule. David's just come off the road. He's a researcher. He's gonna tell you a little bit more about himself, but um, thank you so much for taking the time this evening to uh, chat with us. So David, uh, you'd like to introduce yourself a little bit and say um, you know, a little bit about yourself? Okay, yeah, thanks, Tony. I'm glad to be here. Um, yes, I'm a professor of microbiology and infectious diseases. Uh, within the Iowa Institute for Oral Health Research uh, at the University of Iowa. Um, I've been a professor uh, here for 30 years. Wow. Um, a senior faculty. Um, I have a lot on my plate, yeah. uh, a lot. And, and I have the tripartite mission that faculty have, which is uh, teaching, research, and service. Mm -hmm. And then service can be broken down into collegiate, university, and national service. And I have all of those. Wow. Uh, my research alone, but it takes a fair amount of my, my uh, time and focus. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, a lot on my plate. How do I do everything? Uh, how do I manage everything? Uh, it's, it's, it has been a challenge, but it's getting better now. Awesome. I'm really glad to hear that. That's, uh, that's the good news part of it. It would be... Uh... A whole other story if you came on and said, yeah, I've got all these things to do and uh, this didn't help at all. <laughs> and I'm still behind <laughs> the wall. So thank you so much for letting us know that it's going well. Um, I had a couple of questions prepared. You and I have gone over them a little bit, but uh, let me just start by asking you, David, what was it about 180 degree time management that appealed to you um, uh, above any other program that you've done? And possibly if you mentioned anything uh, that you have done before in the area of time management. Okay. Yeah. As far as any other program, I think I've done just about everything. Wow. Um, you know, as a very young faculty early on, even as a postdoc, I realized that things were going to come at me at lightning speed. Mm. I had a lot of stuff to do and it just kept getting worse. And I had to come up with a system uh, that would grow with me and, and my added responsibilities. Um, and, and so um, Things like uh, most recently, and I still embrace some of the concepts of uh, David Allen's getting things done. Right. Which is, uh, everybody's familiar with that. It's a worldwide uh, phenomenon, if you will. And it's good. I mean, getting capturing, getting everything off your mind into some kind of a system is, is obviously the smart thing to do. I right. still have colleagues that try to keep everything in their, in their head. And that's a bad idea. Really yeah. bad idea. Yeah. Uh, particularly the older you get. Really bad idea. Um, so, so. What, what I, I saw with 180 degree time management, first of all, uh, I haven't mentioned this to you, Tanya, but just, just the title mm -hmm. was intriguing to me because it indicated this is going to be different mm -hmm. than everything else I've looked at. Everything else seemed to be, well, we can make you more efficient, more effective. You can get more done in eight hours or 12 hours. Uh, you can check more boxes and, and that's all great, but it's like, well, do I need to really check more boxes? Right. You know, I'm putting in so many hours and there's always just so much to do. Yeah. And I saw the 180 and then of course thinking about 180, that means, okay, this is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And so that intrigued me. And then looking into it, I realized that I had never experienced a course like this before. Okay. And, and, and so I thought, well, this, this is something that I want to engage in. I want to see, even at my older age and being a professor, I'm always looking for something to uh, give me an edge, if you will. Mm -hmm. But not just professionally, also just my life overall. Right. Because it, the way it is, the way it was, um, I could work, you know, 100 hours a week mm -hmm. and, and still not get everything done. I, I mean, I could just work nonstop and, and, and I don't want to do that. I did that as a young person, but I don't want to do that anymore. I, you know, there are many other things in life I want to do. So that, that's, that's what appealed to me about the course. It had different 
facets of, of things that I thought, okay, this is really intriguing. I want to look into this. Great. Well, thank you for that. Um, what was different? What would like? What, what would you say would be like one of the striking differences when you you know got into the course and uh, we started the webinar? What would you say you know was the thing? Maybe one or two things that really stuck out for you. I, th I think the thing that really struck me at first was the embedded psychology within the course and then finding out early on, why do I make decisions the way I do? Why do I do my time management practices, if you will, the way I do? And I had no idea that I developed a lot of these practices, a lot of these concepts mm -hmm. from a very early age. Right. And, and and you forced me sometimes painfully uh, <laughs> to do a deep dive into myself, even as a young kid. Like, well, what 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 came up in your life that that, you know, was monumental and how did you react or whatever? And it really did open my eyes and seeing the foundation of now I understand why I am the way I am. Mm. And, and as a result, and if you know something like that, then you can start to modify it and make it a little bit better. And, and I had some rough edges on some things. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that was something that I had not encountered before and I found very valuable. That's awesome. So inside of those things that I, I forced you to do a deep dive on, um, what do you know now about yourself that you didn't know before we started the course? I mean, I, I've always loved working with people. I've always loved working with students. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's a great thing. Um, and I will still do that. But I realized that a lot of times I would say yes mm. to different things for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And, and I realized that um, I would gain more responsibility and do more things for the wrong reasons because I had this deep-seated notion that I had to keep proving myself and show how important I am. Mm -hmm. And so I would just, every time a new responsibility, a new committee, a new whatever, oh yeah, I'll do that. I'll chair that or whatever. And, and now I understand why mm. I did that. And so now I don't have to do that anymore. Wow. So. That is, I could not have said that better. Great. Um, would you say, how many results have you had? Or, or, you know, that's kind of broad, but what would you say other than, you know, now that you uh, uh, know that you don't have to say yes to everything, you don't have to chair everything, you don't have to be everything to everybody, you know, what would you say are two to three main results that you've gotten out of the webinar? I think the primary thing is learning that I don't have to do everything and I need to focus better. Okay. And, and learning that I need to put my primary focus on things that really matter, both professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we'll talk about that, I guess, down the line about the sacred schedule. But making sure that I have the time set aside to work on those things and not just simply enjoy ticking off boxes. Right. And, and at the end of the day saying, well, look at this. I ticked 15 things off. But right. What did I really accomplish? You know, what impact did I really have? Now there are days I may just do two major things during the day, but I feel much better about what I've done. Wow, so, that's so, really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We've got someone on with us. Uh, we've got Pat Dawson watching. Yeah, she's also from our group and she's also very active. So Pat, welcome. And uh, I know that you made, you put this in your sacred schedule so that you'd be here tonight. So well done. Uh, we just got started and you'll also be able to, you know, reference this uh, video once we're done for the evening. But uh, Pat, if you have any questions uh, as we go along, you know, I would invite you to write them in the chat and, and to actually address your uh, questions to David. Um, hey, uh, because, you know, you've talked to me before. And as I said to you, there was uh, one of the questions that you had last night um, that you were uh, writing about in the group. And I asked and I said, you know, ask David that tonight. So uh, if you can remember it or if you can look it up on the chat, uh, oh, she says, okay, so she's going to look it up and then you're, I'll read the question up to you, David. Okay. Get in there. Um, okay. So you, you were just talking about the results that you've had while being on the webinar. How many hours, you know, because, oh, that, that's the other thing you said when we started this very well, I didn't even have to ask you about this, that it's not about getting more hours into your day. It's not about, you know, like stretching, 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 stretching your day that a lot of, you know, traditional time managers talk about. How many hours a day would you say you've saved 
since you started this process? Oh, I, you know, it's it's hard to 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 accurately quantify, but I I would put anywhere between two and four hours a day. Wow. I mean, the amount of focus that I have now versus when I started is is, is incredible. And so I, I realized like, well, I know what I'm going to focus on and I don't worry about all the other little things. Now, that doesn't mean I don't block time, which, you know, you know, I've actually posted on Facebook. Right. I will put blocks of time on my calendar that I'll call small task blocks. Yeah. Because there's just, a you know, there's always those little mosquitoes that are appearing everywhere, the things that I've got to take care of, lots of them. Right. But I'll do that on just one block of time. You know, I was like, okay, I know they're going to get done, but they're not going to get done now because now I'm going to work on my grant or I'm going to work on my manuscript or I'm going to whatever. Or I'm going to work on my lectures. Right. Um, these are the things that are of primary focus. So I think that the, the number of hours I've, I've saved, I think, is, is, is quite good. Yeah, that sounds really good. Two to four hours a day. You know, that's nothing to sneeze at. And Pat is saying, you know, I like hearing about having that extra time. So she's happy about that. Uh, Pat, did you find the uh, question that you had last night? Um, and as soon as you do find that, if you put that in the chat, then um, you know David will answer that question for you. Uh, and if you can't find it, I'll take a look for it in a moment uh, while David is answering the next question, um, which is, what is your, oh, she's saying she likes that, okay. What is, what was your favorite session and why? We had eight sessions. And, you know, if I were to read up the sessions, the first session was the regression <clears throat> process where we got back to the source of what you were talking about, those childhood incidents, you know, events that, um, you know, you didn't realize we would have to go back that far for you to get the underpinnings or the psychology behind why you make the time management decisions that you make. So that was the first session that was uncovering, you know, uh, revealing those. And then the second session was when you got an actual opportunity to, you know, uh, replace those, or you know, I like to say now, now, of course, I'm getting a little fancy because as we go on, I learn more, right? So I, I have just been writing about this on, on LinkedIn. Someone else asked me about this. And I wrote that we actually insert probes into your prompts, sorry, not probes, prompts into your subconscious and unconscious mind, because once you've uncovered the unconscious uh, decision that was driving you, you need to replace that, right? So that was one, another session, and then we were talking about uh, distractions, interruptions, procrastination, um, and I have it over here. There's one more. sacred schedule. That's right, the sacred mm -hmm. schedule, and your hangover habits. Right. So I'll ask the question again: uh, Which one or ones were your favorite sessions, and why? Um, I think I think uh, the first. I have a number of favorites, if that's if that's allowable. Um, I, I think I think I think my first one was learning all about the the stop and hop thoughts. Okay. Uh, I mean, as you said, and learning how to deal with those. I mean, I I I still have these sticky notes on the bottom of one of my monitors that reminds me when I get a certain situation and I'm, and I'll, all of a sudden an old thought comes to my mind. I've got a replacement right there, and I look at it, and it's amazing how well it works. Yeah. Because you and I work together to, to create those. Right. And, and so that helps immensely. Uh, so that, that kind of gets me uh, back riding the horse again uh, and, and instead of always falling off. Um, I think the next one, uh, probably my top one was, was the, the sacred schedule and eliminating, uh, it's a separate one, but eliminating your to-do list forever. Okay. And, I mean, that one was because of what that, what that, what that showed me, <clears throat> excuse me, is that, is that, you know, if I can't get the amount of work that I have to fit in today's, it's not going to get done. All right. I mean, that, that's one of the biggest problems with a lot of other systems is you just keep adding more and more and more on and you get more discouraged and more anxious and the stress builds and you keep saying yes to everything and you have no idea when you're going to be able to do it. Right. And then you find yourself working evenings and weekends or whatever, trying to catch up. Yeah. So by creating a schedule and sticking with it, it's amazing how much you can get done. I'm getting the right things done. That's awesome, David. I'm so happy to hear that. Um, and now uh, Pat is asking, what did he say at the bottom of the monitor? I have no idea. Um, Pat, you're going to have to read oh. 
Did, that was that was my uh, oh, yeah. stop and hop thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, uh, so Pat, he was talking about his stop and hop thoughts and uh, that he has them the, in, on the sticky notes at the bottom of his monitor so he can see when he's getting ready to go off track or fall off the horse and, and it keeps him to, on the horse and not getting off track. And Pat is saying here that she's learning how to say no. I have, I wanna direct that one to you, David, because we, we talked a bit about that whole thing about you know uh, learning to and trying to, and can, can you address that for Pat a little bit you know, so, so that she can understand how it's different you know, what we do, how that's different than learning to say no? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a different process. I mean, once you go through things um, and realize what's important to you and why you've been saying yes to all these other things, mm -hmm. then it's much easier to say no. You don't have to learn. It really does become easier because now you know why when something comes to you, you have this initial bubble up that says, oh, I'm going to say yes to that. Now I understand why that bubbles up and how to combat it. It's not something I've learned to do. I just do it. Right. And I've, I've said no to a lot in the last couple, several weeks. I've said no to a lot of things. You how know, is that? How does that feel? It feels good because, you know, that while some of them would have been good opportunities or whatever, uh, not now. I, I, I've got other things I'm focusing on now and I, you can't do everything. And so, you want to you want to say that again, David? You can't do what? You can't do everything. Can't do everything, and yeah. boy, do we try, right? Everybody tries, and again, some some other systems actually perpetuate that. If you just get a little bit more efficient, and a little more effective, that you can do more, and and that's okay. Maybe to a little point, but your quality of life is going to start to slide a little bit. Yeah, if you're, we're not machines, right? <laughs> We're human beings. We're not, you know, human doings or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Right. Now, Pat has just written here, just say no, but she does agree 100%. So it's the just say no, Pat, just to, to um, you know, um, elaborate a little bit on what David was saying, is not learn behavior anymore. Once you do the process, you no longer have to think about it because you've replaced that with the actual ability to say no. This program works on uh, not only your thoughts, your unconscious and subconscious thought, it also works on an emotional level, right? Because that, that pull, like you were talking about, David, that, you know, that knee jerk uh, uh, pull towards saying yes to everything, it's emotionally based a lot of the time. You know, I want someone to like me or what was yours in particular? You were saying yes all the time because? Uh, I, a lot of it was that it made me feel important. Made you feel important. Yes. And, and, and why, and then we went all the way back uh, when I was a kid about why I did that. And it was many, many examples of my childhood and growing up as a young teen ever why I felt like I had to do that. Mm -hmm. And so now I know that I don't have to prove myself that I'm important. Um, you know, I just, I focus on my work. Uh, my work speaks for itself. I speak for myself. And so it, it all works out pretty well, I think. That's really brilliant. Uh, Pat was writing as you were speaking. She said, I feel like I'm needed. So her yes is to feel like she's needed or needs to do her share, right? Right. Uh, then right. she winds up saying yes to a whole bunch of things. Now, if you can give her a little bit of an idea of once you stop doing that, what becomes available, David? Uh, yeah. At yeah, what comes available is I have more time uh, for what I consider my most important work. Mm -hmm. And then of course, another added benefit, I'm always talking about work, is I also have more time for my personal life. Right. And, and, and spending time with my wife, uh, my adult children, um, and spending time with me, uh, my hobbies, just me, me time. Mm. Uh, instead of just sitting home, I mean, there used to be, all I would do is be sit on the couch and work. Wow, you know, and, and my wife would watch me, and I'd be reading this, doing this. It was all work based. Right, I don't do that anymore. Right, you yeah. you've actually instituted something that I know the women on this uh, web this uh, Facebook Live want to hear. What did you start doing, David? That, that uh, your wife is pretty pleased about? I spend a lot of time with my wife. Mm -hmm. A lot of time. That is um, awesome. And yeah. I think I remember you saying something about starting date nights. Right. 
right? We have a date night. We have a couples meeting every Wednesday evening. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have date night, TV night, movie night, whatever we decide on Thursday evenings. Okay. And then, then we also go out to movies and theater. We, lo we love theater, live theater. We'll go out to theater on Friday or Saturday evenings. Wow. So, um, and, and unless I'm traveling, mm -hmm. uh, we spend every, every meal, supper, I mean, and dinner, every meal with each other. And so um, that's a big benefit. How's that different? What did it used to look like when uh, you were bringing that work home and you had the, you know, the phone by the, the, you know, the TV by the couch or computer on your lap or, you know, jumping up to take a call? What was that like? And how's that different? Um, it, I thought I was being productive. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm more effective and efficient. Look at all the things I can do at once. You know, I can sit here and kind of relax, but I also can, you know, email and I can text and I can do this and I can read and I can get ready for tomorrow. And pretty soon it's 10 o'clock at night. And I'm still working. And my wife would say something to me. I wouldn't even hear her. Well, I would actually hear her. I wasn't listening. All right. And so there's a big difference. And, and so, um, I think our relationship was getting pretty strained. We've been married for a long time, right. but I wasn't paying any attention to her. My work was consuming me. Now it still does. I'm very passionate about my work. Right. I just know how to sector it now. Wow. That is awesome. So you don't, you make, you know, so, because that's what I say to a lot of professionals that come to me, they say, you know, it's either going to be my work or my relationship, you know, because I have this passion for my job, but because I'm getting so much flack at home because I'm bringing homework all the time, you know, I'm starting to feel torn. I'm starting to lose the passion for my work because, you know, I've got to make this marriage that I've had for 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years with you, you know, work. So uh, uh, Pat is saying here, making spouse a priority, awesome. So uh, you've got uh -huh. a fan. <laughs> yet another fan. And um, Pat, while we're doing this, I know there's a bit of a lag. So I'm going to ask the question, then I'm going to be quiet and give her a moment to type in the chat, David. Okay. Uh, did You had a question for David. Did you find the question that was in the chat? that you wanted to ask Pat, and we're going to uh, be quiet for a moment and let the tape catch up so that uh, you can ask your question. I'll be looking for it. Well, while you're looking for your question, I'll ask David this, this final question, and hopefully you'll find your question uh, by the time he finishes answering this final question, and then your question will be the last question. So the question is, would you recommend 180 degree time management to professionals and why? Absolutely. <clears throat> I think I'm, I'm testimony that it works. Um, I think, again, almost everything out there talks about how to be more efficient, you know, work and, and be more machine like, you know, work smarter, not harder. But, but the concept within that is you can do more in a less amount of time. And uh, sometimes doing more is not the right thing. In fact, most of the time it's not. It's doing the important things. And, and so I think, yes, I would definitely recommend it. I think, I think your course has a blend of, of things that aren't, you're not going to find anywhere else. And, and I think the psychology part and walking me through it step by step by step all the way through, each session built on the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, of course, you had homework, which, you know, I guess I'm on the other side of the fence this time. Um, so, so I got homework. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it really did make an impact. And so I would tell all, uh, I mean, I'm still quite busy, as you know, as you mentioned, I'm very involved. But, you know, when a certain time of the day comes, usually around 530, sometimes close to six, I'm done. Wow. I'm done for the day. You're done and for now that. it's me time and time. Uh, with my wife. And so um, it's made a remarkable difference. That is brilliant, David. I am so pleased. And thank you so much again for being on. Um, I don't see Pat's, uh, I'm scrolling here and I'm seeing all of her comments and I don't see the question, but you know what, you're in the group, Pat's in the group. She can always ask the question, you know, I'm just going to say, Pat, you can always ask David, you know, he's normally uh, very, very good at responding. And if I find the question in the chat, I will post it to David and, you know, make a post and then we can talk about it there. 
So, uh, David, do you have any final comments? And if you do, uh, please say so. And then I will start to round this up and try and figure out how to cut this off. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think um, not to sound like red green or whatever, but, you know, we're all in this together, you know, and I think I think that, you know, as as a result of me going through this course, um, I, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with somebody reaching out to me if they want more information and how I can help specifically. Um, because I think, you know, I, I got a big help from this course and I always like to help others. Now, I, I won't say yes to everything. If I get a barrage, right. <laughs> I might say no. <laughs> but, but yeah, so that, that, it, it, that's it. You, can't, you can be a very accomplished uh, professional and still not do everything. That is brilliant. That's the, I think we're going to end on that one. Anyone have any questions for David? David, if they have any questions that you can't answer, you just send it on to me or send them on to me. Uh, Pat is saying, thank you so much. She got so much out of it. And uh, we're going to uh, come to our conclusion now. And thank you guys so much for being here and being a part of this. And we'll see you in the group. Oh yeah, just going to mention the uh, hump day huddle. That's tomorrow evening. I'm still trying to get a time on that that works. Um, David, if I could get your you know, uh, input on that right now. If we were to be doing, the, I put a post up and no one answered it so far about these different uh, times that would work for the huddle. What would you say would be a good time for a huddle? Now the huddle is midweek. I'm gonna get on like this and people can ask me any question that they need you know, help with, that they need assistance with. Um, you know, people that have taken the course, people that haven't taken the course, that are in our group, what would be a good time for a huddle, a hump day huddle, 35, 40 minutes on a Wednesday? Um, I think the choices were four, seven, or nine. Is that Eastern Standard Time? Eastern Standard Time, sorry, yes. Uh, well, this Wednesday... Unfortunately, I got a meeting at four and another meeting at four thirty. Right. And then I have my couples discussion. Uh, <laughs> oh no! And so that's on my sacred schedule. So I'm not. I, I'm. I'm very hesitant to uh, to change that. No, you shouldn't change that. No, I wouldn't no. ask you to change that. So Wednesdays actually don't work for you unless no. it was like I don't know. The five o'clock Eastern that you could jump on, or are you are you booked completely from the time you finish work to when you and your wife are? I'm pretty your... booked, actually. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Well, uh, Pat is saying that she's going to check the post. Um, you know, you know, you can always get a hold of me if you need me. If right. You need me. And uh, Pat is also saying now seven is good for her. Ah, she says, I think a lot of people have Bible study on Wednesday night. So you're not alone with that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So that's awesome. Guys, thank you so much for this evening. I look forward to, you know, speaking with you regularly. And uh, David, I'm going to end this, if I can find it, there it is. Stop the live stream, but hang on for a moment, okay? okay. All right, group, take care. That was David and I this evening uh, coming at you live. And thanks for joining us.